Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. This is the third episode of Build the Best DIY 3D Printer. Today we are going to build the Y-axis movement and at the end of the video you will end up having this nice result. Now I'm going to show you the components that we'll need for this part of the printer but before starting be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. At the end of last week's video, we had the Y structure of the printer complete, which I have right here. And today we are going to add to the Y structure all the necessary parts to give it movement. The components that we will need for this part of the printer are two 350mm linear rods, three LM8UU linear bearings, the 6mm aluminium laser cut bed base, and finally a bunch of small zip ties. In this episode there are not going to be 3D printed pieces, but I will upload the DWG file for the heated bed base, as well as our affiliate links to buy all the necessary components while supporting the channel. Once we have all the components ready, we are going to paint the aluminium part using metallic matte white, what will provide a layer of protection to it and also make it really good looking. But before we will give a 5 minutes wet sanding, so that way we will clean the surface from possible industrial elements on it. Once we finish, we'll get an even and clean surface such as this one and now we'll proceed with the spray painting. As you can see, we'll do it in the exterior so we won't mess up our house. You should apply the paint from more or less 25 to 30 centimeters distance, that way you will avoid possible paint drops on the surface. Once we finish the paint job, we just have to let the components dry for a few minutes and it will be ready to go. While we wait for the heated bed support paint job to dry, we are going to take the Y axis structure and we are going to add a small foam pad in each of the four legs. So we'll take one of those pads you can use to put under the tables, chairs, etc. and we are going to cut four small squares with the size of the legs. Once we have them, we just have to glue them in place using their sticky side. Once we're done, we'll flip it back in place and now we won't scratch any surface while having our printer perfectly stable. I think the heated bed base will be already dry, but before picking it up, we should check if we can fit the linear rods in place as it should. In our case, as you can see here, the linear rod exceeds by around 2mm the gap meant to host it, so we will use a couple hex wrenches to adjust the distance of the legs in the y direction. After a couple minutes adjusting the M8 nuts, we can perfectly fit the rods in plates, so now is when I'm going to pick up our heated bed base. And as you can see, it's looking really nice. Next we'll introduce the three linear ball bearings in place, but before we're gonna grab our zip ties and introduce them through the holes like so. Once we have all three zip ties inserted, we'll present the linear bearings in place and we'll insert the linear rod throughout. Once inserted, we'll put the zip tie using a pair of pliers and then we'll repeat the process with the other linear ball bearings on the other side. Then we'll introduce the linear rod through the bearing and we'll bring our Y-axis structure that we have previously prepared. Now we'll present it in place. You have to make sure that you orientate the side with only one bearing in the same side that we can find the power supply holder. For now the linear rods and the heated bed assembly are just resting on top of the holes that will hold them in place. So next step will be to insert four small zip ties in the gaps made for it on each of the four legs. And once inserted, we'll hit the linear rod with the rubber of the screwdriver for example in order to prevent any possible damage on the linear rods to fit them in place. Once all four corners are inserted, we'll tighten each of the zip ties first with our fingers and later with the help of a pair of pliers. Once set, we'll cut the waste part using a blade or scissors. And at this point of the video, here we have the moving parts of the y-axis completely built. As you can see we have a really smooth movement and you should get the same. Remember that you will have our affiliate links to buy all the necessary components down in the description, as well as the link to download the DWG file that you can use to laser cut the heated bed base. Of course, if you can get it laser cut, you can contact me at architects3dp at gmail.com and I will try to find you a solution. 
Ok guys, so we are mostly done for this episode. Finally I'm going to make as always a recap of all the components we used for this build. For hardware, we used two 350mm linear rods, three LM8UU linear bearings, the 6mm aluminium laser cut base, and a bunch of small zip ties. We have also used the DWG file heated bed base. In the next episode, we will build the Y-axis electronics and cable management, where we will install the heated bed. At the end of that episode, we will have the Y-axis 100% built, so be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. Hit the like button if you liked the video, leave a comment and share this episode so more people will be able to learn with the project. Finally, I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of you, and especially to our Patreon supporters that are slowly growing, for continuing to make this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, getting nice rewards and making me super happy, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3 dp or clicking here in the top right corner. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next video.